So the plan for today is to do an exercise with the chi-square test. Before doing the exercise, however, I would like to spend a few minutes on these slides that I covered yesterday to clarify a few things that yesterday I just let's say, skipped or skipped quickly because it was mainly because it was late, not because it, it's something really difficult. So yesterday we said that uh, for, for our coin a tossing experiment, uh, we computed uh, the, the, the chi square, that is 1.8 in our case, and then we had to determine the degree of freedom for this experiment. And we said that we have two formulas and we are going to use the first one. Uh, that is this one. That is the number colors min minus one. Uh, because we have a single variable and not two variables. Um, actually, there is two things that I would like to, to say today about this. The first one is, uh, let's say, more intuitive definition of the degree of freedom and a different way to compute the degree of freedom, also to check if uh, you are using the, the right formula for performing the right computation. So one thing that I yesterday said is that this is typically the formula that we are using, oops. Uh, this is typically the formula that we are using and typically we have one. So while for A-B testing in particular, typically we have one as degree of freedom, it's not always true that this is the formula that we are using. Actually, we also use the second one, uh, but for A-B testing, at least in the, say, the normal cases, the most common case, we just have one as degree freedom independently for which formula we are going to use. So let's try to understand what is this degree of freedom and how to verify that this one is the right number in this case, independently from the formula. So uh, for, where is, uh, okay, we don't have here, but if we put, um, let me just draw this, this. If we put all this information on a table, we have that head, tail, and we have, I don't remember, 13 head and seven tail. And the total here is 20. So we know that in this, this is, this is a table in which we have the, our variable that is here, this is the coin, the coin face, uh, and we have this number. And we have this number that is fixed, let's say, because this is the number uh, of, the, uh, of the trial that we have, done, we have done. And we also know if we can, we can draw uh, another table like this, and we also know that uh, in the expected case, this number are 10 and 10 where again, the sum of this row is 20, because obviously we, we want to compare uh, with this same uh, number of trial. So what is the degree of freedom? Why in this table here, the degree of freedom is one? Because the degree of freedom is the number in this case that we can freely modify uh, without having any constraint from the other numbers. What does it mean in this case? In this case, we have just one cell, let's say this, that we can freely modify. Because if we modify this, if we say this is not 13, but is 12 or 10 or whatever, this other cell is not free to variate. This other cell is constrained by the sum, the total, the grand total of the row and the value that we put in the first shell. So we have just one degree of freedom because we can have just one of these that can freely variate and change independently in a way from the other. Now, in this example, I can say that we can variate these and this is as a consequence is seven because this is 13, but we can also variate the tail and as a consequence, the other one will not be free to change if we change this. So we just have one spot, one cell in this case, that is free to change 
and the other just to reflect uh, the changes of the first one. Indeed, uh, I told you that we tossed the coin 20 times and we got head 13 times. And consequently, we got seven for the tails. That's, we can the tail for seven, seven times because 20 is the total, 13 head. And so that number is mandatory with 13 and 20 seven. So this is the degree of freedom. The, the cell, the number, how many number can change in this table, in a table like this, which we have the variable, we have the column, and we have also the row. So now you also better understand why we, we speak about columns or row, because these are two columns. And actually there is, this is just one row here. That is the number, the count uh, of time. So this is the first one. Uh, way of understanding what is the degree of freedom and a way to compute the degree of freedom in the to check if the four if you apply correct the formula if you look at the table you, you can say okay here i can have just one cell one number that is free to change and the other is constrained depends strongly from the the number that we put in the in the, in the other cell and so the degree of freedom is one here is this clear? Okay. And this is, was the first thing. The, first, the second thing that I would like to, to say, to tell you is which formula are we going to use? So I said that typically we use the first one, but we can also use the second one. So this is quite uh, complex because what does it mean typically the first or typically the second? Uh, so a way to say if, if we have a, a variable or if we have two variables, so in this case, we have just one variable, the coin, one independent variable, and maybe we can have cases in, we, in which we have more than one, one variable and we can use this. Uh, but then you have to, to remember if this is includes independent variables only or to include dependent, dependent variable and, and so on. So, a different way to think about it is what is written here, goodness of fit and test of independence. Uh, we said yesterday that we use chi-square tests for doing A-B testing, in which we have one case and we want to compare it with another case. Uh, in this case of the coin, we didn't do an A-B testing because the goal here, if you remember, is that the behavior of the coin uh, differ or not different, it, depend, it depends which hypothesis we read, significantly from a normal coin. In this case, we perform what it's called the goodness of fit. And the goodness of fit is how much a single entity, in this case, this coin, is a good fit for the general population of all the possible coins. Because we were interested in understanding if this coin is just a normal coin or this is a fake, unfair coin. And so, which is the goodness, uh, which is the probability, let's say, that this coin is another coin like in, in the entire uh, population of all existing coins. This is called the goodness of fit. How a single entity, a single the subject, a single thing, uh, match is part of a larger population, is fit for a, for a larger population. When we want instead, uh, and in this case, we typically, we, we, don't, we have just one row because we want to know if the coin is uh, part of the population and we just use the coin. If we want, to say, we just have a one measure. And we, if we want to know if, I don't know, if I'm a, a researcher that is a good fit for the, categories of uh, the population of all researcher in computer engineering, computer science, whatever, uh, or human computer interaction, according to my publication in the last five years, the number of publication in my last, in my last five years, since K-square is categorical, we use categorical data, uh, we can do it because it's a fit of population. And again, here we have just one number, the number of my publication with respect to the other, for instance. So this is a goodness of fit. The other way in which we use the chi-square chi process, the 
quest square test is for performing the test of independence. So comparing one thing to one to the other things. And so in that, in those cases, we typically have more than one variable, dependent plus independent, and we typically have more than one row and more than one column, where the rows and the columns are the levels of the variables, independent and dependent variables. Uh, typically, and this is why we have the degree of freedom of one in most of the case, typically for A-B testing, we have tables like this made by two columns and two rows. So if you use this formula and here put two and here put two, you see that the result is that the degree of freedom is one. And also if you think which variable can which number here can vary freely with the constraint or observe the grand total. So in this evaluation, we want our interface not to be a good fit since the normal population will be the null hypothesis. Uh, so it's it's different. I mean, in the ABA in the AB testing or I mean, also in control experiment in which we want to compare two things, we don't want to, to know if a, as a single change is a good fit for whatever population of buttons. So if we, if we have two buttons, we don't want, want to know if one button is a, a normal button, a button that behave good as all the others uh, or not. We want to know if that, that button perform better in some way than the other specific button. Not all the possible button or a normal button in the world, just that in that specific context. So this is the difference. And then we apply the same formula, the same, the same test, just we use probably a different way to compute that and that all the process is the same. But it's the intention that is different. We don't want to check if maybe typically with A-B testing or control experiment, we don't want to check if one entity is part of the bigger categories of those entities, but we just want to say if there is a difference in some more than one major according to two specific objects or two specific uh, inter user interface, part of the user interface, function of user interface and so on. But we will see uh, um, an example of an A-B testing now. Uh, so something that is a test of independence, not a goodness of fit, so that it's probably also clear with a, a running example. So this was just the two things that I would like to say about uh, degree of freedom. So let's do this exercise now. So I have a mock up of a little a pieces of the Portale della Didattica. Uh, this is not real, obviously, it's all artificial. And we have the, the original, let's say here, uh, um, the original interface in which we have, you know, in a page of the course, we you have the home page, we have the news, the material, the forum, uh, that probably none of you ever clicked on uh, or just to, to know what is the here. Uh, this, the, uh, this is my, my version of the, the version of the teacher, the students, the list of the students are on the course and the, the material that the student can upload on the teaching portal uh, for evaluation for anything. And so this is our version B that is the, the normal one. And we, here we have the version A just to keep this naming of A-B testing. And here the change that uh, I did uh, for, for, for fake is to change this forum in this community, just the label, the label of the, of the link. And I, I want to know, I want to understand if the community link leads to a significantly more engagement and use by the students than the forum. That is, how many times a student click here instead, and how many times a user click here. If, if they click here more 
than forum with just the change of naming. So you see very specific question and also very specific change in this case. Changes could be also bigger in A-B testing and more significant, but this is just for making a, an example that's clear and working for everybody. We just change the label. That is uh, something that we can uh, actually do. Hmm? Uh, also for A-B testing. And we perform an online A-B testing and we randomly show each student of Polytechnical one version of this page. So some students that log in tomorrow will see this and some other students will see that. So they will go into the teaching portal for downloading material, for booking for my exams, for doing a lot of other things, but they will also see these changes. So maybe our hope is that by seeing community, they will click more on community than on forums. Uh, and they, then we, they will click also in other point of the page to do other activities. And so we just pick the population of the Polytechnic of the students. We randomly show either this version or this version of the teaching portal. And we are trying to measure the engagement rate in this case. So how many students open that functionality, click on community or click on forum, independently of what is what happens after clicking on that page. Maybe there is no difference, maybe there is a totally different system, we don't know. We just want to understand very specific, very small, the engagement rate. How many students use that function, click on the button. So we, we did the experiment. We uh, run randomly assigned people and we got that, uh, well, in the community version, we have 100 students that log in in that page and see community and 120 that see the forum. Uh, so notice that this is quite typical for online A-B testing and not to have a population that is perfectly balanced because we don't know how many students will have to, uh, we will log in to the system, um, but more or less similar in this case. And we see that 30 students out of these 100 uh, use the functionality when it's uh, clicked, when it's written as community and 20 use the forum that probably it's sci-fi sci here. Uh, and this is the other number of 70 because it's 100 minus 30 and 100 people done to use the forum because they want to book for an exam, they want to do other things. So this is around 30%, obviously, because these are 100, and this is the 17% of students that use the functionality. So by looking at this number, we can say, great, let's change the community because community is better. We have 30% and here we have 17% of usage. So the usage of a community is better. Let's change the title and retain the function because the more people click there. All right, we have done. Have we, have we have done or there is something that is not sure. Can we say that community is better just by looking at this? Yes, no, maybe. No. Okay. No, we can't. We cannot. Because we can. We we don't know if this just happened by chance. Uh, because we had quite few visitors. Maybe if we had a different set of students and we test it in a different day, or I don't know. We 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 last. We we took another days to do this experiment, maybe the results will be totally different. How we can know if the results are significant stable. So we can actually use the chi-square test to understand whether the difference 30% versus 17% is significant. 
To do this, we can write a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. Suggestion on what we can write here. which is our alternative hypothesis. Or our null hypothesis, as you prefer. So we have a comment in the chat, null hypothesis, the percentage of students who click on the button don't change, mm, more or less. Let's try to say it better than this. Instead of saying, we, we want to say, alternative community left significantly more students with respect to forum, the alternative, uh, it, it's okay. So yeah, we, we can use this. Hmm? So alternative hypothesis, quite close to one in the chat. The community link will lead to significantly more student using uh, the functionality versus the original form link. Hmm? So oh, it is basically more or less the same um, uh, than the one in the chat with the difference that here we also have using the functionality. So what we are measuring, the number of clicks, the, num the measure of engagement. So something that gives this idea should be also in the hypothesis. So what is the version number one? What is the, so the two things that we are comparing and what we uh, want to, let's say, understand that is the usage, uh, the engagement, the clicking, the login, whatever it is, but something that we want to measure. And the null hypothesis, so it's easier starting from the alternative and generating new hypothesis from that is that the community link will lead to no significantly significantly change significant change in the number of students using the functionality with respect to the original form link. So we said as always that uh, the alternative hypothesis as a an indication of what we want that one lead to significant more, more usage than the other, while the null hypothesis say that there is no significant change in the number of students that use the functionality, not in the functionality per se or in other things. Does it, a question from the chat, does it take in, into account the difference in the total visit, visit, visitors, not in the uh, hypothesis, we will see that. We, we have that data. That is unbalanced, and we know um, it's the real world, and it's fine, and it's it's acceptable to have an A/B testing that is not so controlled for the number of total visitors. So, okay, we have our hypothesis. Obviously, the hypothesis doesn't uh, consider data. We are just focusing on the hypothesis now, and so we can do the next step. So we have this, um, uh, we have this information, the data that we had today. We run the experiment and we can write this table as before, in which we have one variable here that is an independent variable, the, the title of the button, one is community and one is forum. And this is the, um, let's say the dependent variable the usage of the functionality. So the number in this case, because this is always categorical data, the number of students that use the functionality and the, obviously the number of students that didn't use the functionality. And what I did here is perform just some sum. I performed the sum of the rows here and the sum of the columns here to have the grand total essentially. So 30 plus 20, 50, 70 plus 
100, uh, 170, and the same things here. And the grand total of the rows and the, the columns is 220. We just perform the, the sum because we need this for, for what? We remember from the chi-square process that we need uh, that we need uh, uh, the observed values, and these are the observed values, and also the expected values. That in the case of the coin was 50% and 50% of the total, that was 20. In this case, we don't have just one row, we have two rows, and, um, and we don't have statistics that help us understand which is uh, the balance between one of the other. So which are, how we can compute the expected values from, for creating the other, let's say the other table, another table like this. So this is the observed data, this is the expected data. And to fill this, we can use this formula. Let's say for every single element, we get the row total. So in this case, 50 multiply per the column total, 100, divided for the grand total, 220. So, and the same here, we will get 50 multiplied 120 uh, divided by uh, 220. And we do this four times and we get some number. And so try to do this. Uh, I will give you like five minutes to do this. And then we will see if your number are the same of mine. And we are doing this because we need to preserve the totals on the rows and on the column, obviously also the grand total here. So we need to put here number that are consistent with the totals for each row and for each column. And in, the case, in this case, we have two rows and two columns, but these also apply if we have the same formula apply if we have multiple rows and multiple columns. And this could be uh, quite easily uh, an exercise for the exam, given a uh, user interface and the, the original table like this, compute the, uh, formulate the null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis and compute the chi-square and tell uh, and write if this, the change is significant or not and why. So basically the exercise that we are doing now with different data, with different uh, buttons, with different attributes, but the same process.
okay, which number are we are going to write here in the first cell? Okay, so 22.7, this is a dot, uh, 27.3, 77.3, and 92.7. So uh, after you compute these, you have also a way to check if actually these numbers are reasonable. And the, the way is by performing the same addition we perform to compute these totals here. So 22.7 plus 27.3 should do 50. And 77.3 plus 92.7 should do 170. And vice versa, also for the colon, 22.7 plus 77.3 is 100, and 92.7 plus 27.3 should be 120. So if you, after the computation, you, the, the, the totals in the rows, in each row, in each column is not uh, coherent with the expected one, you make some, made some mistakes in, in the computation of this formula here. So in this case, it seems reasonable. Uh, I don't know if your, yeah, obviously your uh, computation confirm mine. Uh, so you see here the formula is written a slightly different way, but it's just the same thing. Uh, it divides before multiplying, but in the end, it doesn't matter. And so, the question is now, so we have the observed data that is here. This is the observed data and the expected data. So with two 2020 experiment in total uh, of which 100 in the first button and 120 in the second button. And with this distribution between the people that use the functionality and people that doesn't use the functionality. If the null hypothesis is accepted, so if there is no difference in behavior, we should have we should have had 22.7 students that clicked on community and 27.3 students that clicked on forum. While here we should have had 77.3 students that didn't use the functionality and 92 students on the other side didn't use the functionality. These are the values if the null hypothesis is true. So if there is no difference between the community link and forum link, and these are our data. I want to understand if our data is significantly different from this essentially, uh, and possibly in favor of the button. Question, how many degree of freedom do we have? independently of, of which formula are we going to use, but how many degree of freedom do we have? And why? How many of these number we can change given the totals here and here that cannot change because are the total number of the experiment, the total number of visitors in this case, and the total number of click and not click on the on the link. How many of these numbers can freely uh, change without impacting the others? Yes, one. Why? If you can write briefly in the chat.
So uh, the comment is, is correct. If we changed, for example, the student to click on community, we have to change the student who didn't click on community and the one who clicked on forum. So if we, instead of 30, it's correct. Instead of 30, we have 25. To keep this number 100 and to keep this number 50, we have to change both these and these. But if we change these, we also have to change these because the total here should be uh, 120. And also here should be uh, 170. So we, with just one change, we need to change all the others. So we have just one degree of freedom. So, and the same, if we change this one, all the other will change consequently and, and vice versa. Uh, if we add here three columns, so three, le three levels, community, forum, and whatever, how many degree of freedom uh, we will have. So if we, two, correct. Okay, so this, you can compute this with the formula, number of rows to minus one, multiplied number of columns minus one, that gives one. Or also in this way by reasoning and checking. And if we have three columns, it will be uh, three, well, the other side, the two minus one, multiply three minus one, that will be two. Okay. So now we have these two tables. Uh, I don't remember if I told you how these are called. This, this table is called the contingency table. Uh, this is the proper name of the table. The table made in this way, in which we have variables, let's say dependent variables in this case, uh, on the rows and independent variables with a different level on the, on the columns is called contingency table. And also this, obviously this is build because it's the one with the expected result. So now we can do the process of K-square. So let's calculate the quest care process. Uh, just uh, as a reminder, how we can calculate the quest square, the quest square test is a sum between 30 uh, minus the equivalent expected squared uh, divided by the expected plus the second uh, in any order, since it's um, so 20 or 70, it's the same. So let's say uh, 20 uh, multiplied by this, squared divided by this, then 70 multiplied by minus uh, 77, squared, and so on. So if you perform the computation, it should be more or less this. So please confirm that. I will give you a few minutes so that you can try to do this and confirm that the number is correct also to you. And notice that in this example, differently from the coin example, just to reiterate on this, uh, in the coin example, we were interested in understanding if our coin was uh, unfair. And so if our coin was part, was a typical coin or not. 
here we are not interested in understanding if the behavior of the button, the number of clicks, the engagement, the usage, whatever you want to measure, is uh, co coherent and consistent with a generic button everywhere. But here we are interested in understanding if the usage of that button is it's also if that button is more used than the other button in the other version, not a generic button in the user interface or everywhere, but that that other specific version of the button. So it's a comparison between two elements. Okay. Same results, and we have k-square 5.55. Uh, so now in our process, we have to calculate k-square, we have to calculate the degree of freedom, and then we have to look in this table and see if this statistical significant or not, and what is the p-value. And so we calculate this as it's 5.55. Uh, we already compute the uh, degree of freedom uh, by looking at the table, but it's, it's one, and here there is the formula, this is a test on independence, not a goodness of fit. So one, uh, as always, so we are, and again, this, this one is typical for A-B testing and also for control experiment because uh, you, you typically have two columns uh, or two rows, um, two columns uh, somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's quite common to have one independently from the formula. Mm -hmm. And, so we now to have to look for this 5.55 in our table, that is the same table that we uh, used yesterday in the row in which we have the degree of freedom of one. So in the first row, if we add degree of freedom of two, we have to look at the second row. So where is this result 5.55 in the row? This result is basically between these, and these, do you agree? More close to these. Do you agree? So we can say that, um, the p-value in our case is zero dot is around zero dot zero twenty five because we have five dot fifty five and uh, this is zero twenty four zero twenty four but it's it's something in the middle but surely not less than this something more than this so we can approximate. Uh, for the worst in this case, and going the, here, probably it could be also 0 0.02 or 0 0.015. Uh, we, we don't know if, if the table has more column, we can say, okay, no, it's better if we say between these and that or in the middle of other two. But in this moment, we say that it is around this, or if you want to be more precise, given the information that you have in the table, you can also write in this way 0 0.0. 25 and 0 0.01. So I have the interval. Uh, so if in the written exam, you have an exercise like this, we will provide you with the table, with this table. We all did, so if we have any exercise that ask you for applying something or need a table like this, we will provide you also the material. So the table in case of the k square example, the full table in the case of k square example, uh, in the case of apply the heuristics of Nielsen to a user interface, we will give you the 10 heuristic of Nielsen written on a piece of paper. Instead, if we are going to ask you uh, which are the 10 heuristic of Nielsen or comments three of the uh, heuristic of Nielsen, we are not going to provide you the, the heuristics, but only if you have to apply them in uh, uh, an exercise like, like this or an exercise. Hmm. 
Uh, but so in this case, uh, if, if there is an exercise like this, we will give you uh, the table, the full table about this, and we will give you obviously the uh, expect the uh, observe the data. Otherwise, you cannot compute everything else. So back to this, uh, we have the, the p value should be comprised is, is let's say around 0 to 0 0.25 or in the interval between 0, 0 0.25 and 0, 0 0.01, mm -hmm. not before. If we add, just to check that everything is clear, if we have a degree of freedom with two, which value are we going to get? Mm. Okay, so quite a lot of answer. If we have a degree of freedom of two, we should check a, a number uh, that is, uh, let's say, close to this. So we are going to actually take these two numbers because not 0 0.10, because it's less than this. Uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, you're right. Um, I, I read the bright number. So these. So we can say that P is between 0 0.1 and 0 0.05, because 5.55 is greater than this, but it's lesser than this. So we cannot pick these, these or that because they are too different from this 5.55. If we add the two degree of freedom with that specific value, obviously. So, and we could say that probably it's around 0 0.9, 0 0.8, something in the middle, but surely not more than this. And surely not this, because this is 5.9 and this is 5.5. .5. So this is surely less than 0 0.05. It's clear for everybody, especially for the one who, the, the people that didn't get the right answer, the right, the, the didn't write in the chat the right answer. Okay. So you have to check in which interval the number is. But back in our case, we can say either that is around 0 0.025 because it's really close, it's quite close, or we can use the interval if you want to be more precise. So now the first, five, the first step is sustain or reject the null hypothesis. And this is a reminder from the previous set of slides. We usually reject the null hypothesis when P is minor of 0 0.05 or p is minor of 0 0.01. So if it's, uh, we reject the null hypothesis and we have to pick one. So now we are going to pick one. Uh, if it's lesser than this or if it's lesser than this. So it's in this direction, lesser in this direction. So in our case, what, do we, what would happen? So what means this? Well, this means, this means that we are confident that 95% of the case, this one, or 99% of the case, this one, uh, the test results correctly apply hmm, to the general population. So we, if we repeat the test, we are confident that we are going uh, to interpret population of students performing the, the, the test. Hmm. So in our case, if we choose this value, hmm, so 95%, we can actually um, reject the null hypothesis hmm? because our value is, uh, we said it is P uh, 0 0.025 and 0 0.01, right? Right. Hmm? So if we choose this, we can reject null hypothesis and we can say that the community link leads to significant more students using the functionality than the, um, the forum button. 
if we pick this instead, what we can say? Yeah, we cannot reject null hypothesis and so if we pick 0 0.01, we cannot reject null hypothesis and it's fine and no. So we cannot say that the form link was better, but we can say that we cannot confer, confer. So we can say that uh, we don't know actually if the community link or the form link produce better or different results. So we actually don't know, maybe the community is better, maybe the forum is better, or maybe they are the same. They produce the same identical engagement. We don't know, we don't have any idea with this data. If we want to know, if we pick this 99% confidence uh, for performing, what we, can we do? We can, for instance, run this uh, with more people. So instead, if we have these numbers, for instance, it's not necessary to, to, to move one, uh, to multiply everything by 10 to have something significant, statistically significant or no. But if we have these, if I proper remember from when I, I tried these last year, uh, if we have this number, we have the statistical significant also for uh, P minor of, Z, of 0 0.01. And so the community button seems better uh, than the forum button. But again, it is not always the case. Maybe in some cases it's not significant and also getting more people is not significant because it's actually not significant, uh, the results. In this case, it seemed to me that if we uh, add more people, um, like multiply everything by 10, uh, the, it's, it's more significant, uh, the community. Also for 0 0.01. But obviously if we have this exact number, we don't know how, without running experiment, if we have 1000 people here and 1200 people here, we get exactly this number. Maybe not, maybe yes. So we have to run another experiment with the same setting and, uh, and confirm our results. But with this data that we have, if we choose uh, P uh, as 0 0.05, we can reject null hypothesis and confirm that the community link leads to significant more students using the functionality than the forum. Uh, and so maybe we can consider to rename that uh, in the teaching portal. If we want instead higher uh, confidence, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Uh, I, I didn't understand the question. With having P minor than 0 0.05, we can reject it, yes, because uh, our value is bigger. It's sorry, yeah, it's it's lesser than. Yeah, it should be exactly, I was thinking the same. It should be this. Actually it's written this, no, without equal, without equal. We never write equal in this kind of things. But yeah, I wrote it in the in the in the in the wrong order. because this is something in between here. So we have, you have to, to, to invert the things that you, you have to read the table in this, in this way, in this, from this side. So let me just provide this 0 0.01. Okay. So any question about these up to now? Everything clear? 
So obviously this is the last topic of the course and you can expect a question about control experiment in the, in the exam. You can expect an exercise like this in the exam. Uh, we are not asking you to do a control experiment for your prototype uh, because there, there will be no time and you don't have a comparison to, to do actually. So you see the, especially for A-B testing, you see the, the, the feature here. We can say that maybe community, the link of the community is better than forum, but we don't know if maybe there is another alternative that is way better from both, or maybe it's just, uh, so in practice, maybe we have another alternative that is better, or maybe that service is unused and useless in that way. And whatever name you put it in the link, so from a practical point of view, it will be better to remove the functionality and maybe replace it or not with something else. This is not something that we know from DB testing. DB testing is very precise, it's very chirurgical and allow us to say um, if among the things that we are comparing according to the matrix, according to the dependent variables that we are measuring, if these things are different or not. And remember the K-square test apply uh, only to categorical data and with a certain number of, uh, of data to, to analyze. Uh, and it gives you only the information if these are different, but not how big the different is. So we know the community is different than forum, but this difference could be slight, could be a, a big difference, could be a small difference. We don't know, we cannot quantify this difference with the k square test. We can use other tests to quantify these if we want, but not with the K-square test. Any question? On these or in general? No question, yes, some question, just type no, if you don't have questions. So we can use the calculator at the exam, yes. <laughs> so bring, uh, bring or uh, have a cal uh, calculator with you because if you have an exercise like this, I see, I don't see how you can do this computation without a calculator. Yeah, no, it's it's a proper uh, it's a proper question. So yes, you can you you can it's you are encouraged to use a calculate uh, a calculator to uh, to the exam if you have an exercise like this. And if you have an exercise like this, you have to remember the formula. We are not giving you the formula, obviously. We are giving you the table for the probability values, but all the formulas, these and the one about the degree of freedom, it's something that you have to remember. Not that they are particularly difficult, but just to be clear. So what I want to do now in this half an hour that is missing in this last uh, proper lecture is, so I, I don't have any other slide and we cannot start another topic, obviously, because we are going to, to end uh, the course soon. Um, so I, I would just to remind you that tomorrow we will have, we, I would like just do, do two things. The first one is to remind you that tomorrow we will have the last lab that is again, supervised work group from 10 to uh, 11.30, all the groups. And then from 11.30 to 1 p.m., more or less, uh, more or less than more, uh, we will have a simulation of the exam. So you will log in on Zoom uh, tomorrow uh, if you want, uh, and you will you know, set up the, the environment also uh, as per the exam. We will give you 
the text of an exam as in a real exam. And I will give you like half an hour, 20 minutes to start thinking about how to answer those questions. You can obviously tomorrow use any material that you have just to understand if you are able to understand, to, you know, to, to at least identify where to get the answer from that and more or less to have an idea which are the answer. And then in the second half of that hour, uh, I'm going to show you the solution and uh, to eventually discuss with you, optionally discuss with you, if your solution of your answer that you plan to do is different from the answer that we that I will show you. And then we conclude the course in that way with this exam simulation. So this is the plan for tomorrow. Um, the second thing that I'd like to do in this half an hour uh, is I will stop the recording now and uh, I will like to, to, let's say, use this half an hour if you have any question, doubts in general about the lecture, about the material, about the course, about the prototype, about the feedback or something. So use this as sort of office hour of half an hour if you have something to, to say. If you don't have something to say, I will stay here for this other half an hour and then around 1 p.m. I will uh, stop the record, uh, stop the, the call. So I'm going to stop the recording now because maybe some of the things that you're going to ask are maybe private or uh, not, not deserve to be uh, recording a streamed online. Uh, but if you have any inter interesting question also for the other, I will then uh, copy them back to the document that we prepare in December is online with question and answer because they could be most interesting for the other. Instead, are more personal question or not relevant to many people, uh, they will exhaust. Uh, they will exhaust during this half an hour. Okay, 